want to talk to you about a subject that is burning in my spirit. I've been dealing with a lot of distractions for some time now. And I'm trying to make sense of the distractions. Because I realize that the adversary we are dealing with does not play fair. He doesn't play fair. Recently, we lay a sister to rest. She had a brain tumor, went for a surgery. She survived the surgery. She was doing well. She took a walk in the area where she lived. And while she was walking, a car came from nowhere and drove into her and killed her. A few weeks ago, Bishop was telling me about three brothers. <clears throat> one of them is in the choir. <clears throat> it was the birthday of one. So they decided they were going to take food and go to the beach and relax and celebrate his birthday. So the brother in the choir said, you all go ahead. I'm going to church and after church I'll come and see you at the beach. So he came to the service and after the service he went to the beach. Whilst they were there relaxing, one of the brothers decided to step into the water. So he stepped in the water. Then the water took him. While he was drowning, the other brother decided to go rescue him and the water took him too. And the third one in the choir didn't know how to swim. So he stood there, he couldn't do anything and his two brothers were taken. The next day their bodies appeared at the beach there. I want to talk to you about a subject I entitled Demonic Interference. Demonic Interference. There, there's a lot of interference in all of our lives and it takes a spiritual person to identify it. And if you are a carnal Christian, a soulless Christian, and a believer that lives with logic and philosophy and your reasoning, the enemy will make a mockery out of you. But I refuse. I refuse to be mocked. For the God we serve cannot be mocked. See, I hear you. So I want to begin a journey with you. I want to begin a journey and help you make sense. Make sense of certain scriptures. I want to make an argument. And after that, I want us to go into prayer. That anything that has disadvantaged you will be overturned. Uh, you didn't, uh, I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. That, that, is, that is a low energy response. I said anything that has disadvantaged you shall be overturned. If you believe it, scream yes. So to begin our journey, come with me to Genesis Chapter 49 and the 19 verse. I want to begin with Genesis 49, 19. God. God. G-A-D. Underline the word God. G-A-D. Underline the word God. Because I'm going to take you from the Old Testament dispensation to New Testament dispensation and establish an argument. It's only... It's only ignorant people who conclude all kinds of things when they see or hear the pain and the afflictions of others, like Job's friends. When Job's friends heard of his pain and affliction, they came to certain conclusions that was wrong. They had no idea that God was not innocent of Job's affliction, that God himself was in the holy creation. That at the end of the day, it was going to work for the good of Job. Turn to somebody and say, whatever you are dealing with will work for your good. Yeah. It will. I promise you. Make no mistake. At the final analysis, it will turn in your favor. And those responsible for your pain 
Hear me. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I'll tell you something. When Daniel, when they conspired against Daniel, it was the governors and it was the presidents who put Daniel in prison. Their children and their wives were not part of it. But when Daniel survived the dens of lions, because at, an, at a young age, he had an opportunity to defile himself, to eat of the portion of the king's meat and drink the king's wine. And Daniel said, I'm better than this. I will not touch the king's meat. It's consecrated and dedicated to idols. I won't drink the king's wine. And Daniel survived three kings. He survived three kings. When he was thrown into the dens of lions, he was around 90 years. About that time, if you study scripture carefully. And because he did not eat the portion of the king's meat, when the lions saw him, they could not eat his meat because he hadn't contaminated himself. Are you hearing me, somebody? But what I want you to realize is this. When he survived, the king said, those who conspired against Daniel, bring them, their wives and their children, and cast them into the dens of lions. Hear me. You reap more than you sow. When it comes to reaping, it's always more than what you sow. I'm telling you. So go ahead. Lord, go ahead and scheme. Go ahead and be angry. Go ahead and devise evil. It will backfire. It's just a matter of time. Somebody put your hands and say, backfire, backfire. Somebody say, backfire. Kolami kalusalas. Selata kalanda suit. Kalanda wasan. Kilei tukuwaka san. Kefalu Wahasan, tell somebody it will work in your favor. It will work in your favor. It's just a matter of time. Make no mistake. This thing will work in your favor. Say, I hear, I hear you. God, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. The word troop translated from Greek, from the Hebrew to Greek and to English, means legion. And the Roman legion is made of 6,000, 3,000 footmen, 3,000 horsemen, 6,000. A Roman legion is made of 6,000. And the word legion in Hebrew means troop. And translated from Hebrew to Greek means legion, 6,000. And in those days, the patriarchs of old, were spiritual people very deep in understanding. And at this particular time, Jacob had come to a moment in his life when he knew that it was about time for him to switch from time to eternity. So he gathered his children, the 12 tribes, and he began to bless them and began to predict what shall become of each one of them in the future. When he got to Gath, G-A-D, he saw in the lineage of Gath, the bloodline, by the word of wisdom. The word of wisdom reveals events that are yet to come. And by the word of wisdom, he saw something happening to one of the bloodline of Gath. And he saw that Gath was taken captive or at ransom or Gath was captured or hijacked. Then he said, at last, at the end, Gath shall overcome. Tell somebody, it doesn't matter how long, it doesn't matter how long, I will overcome. Tell someone, make no mistake, make no mistake. By the blood of the covenant, I will overcome. If you believe it, put your hands together and say, I will overcome. I will overcome. I will overcome. 
Now, there were 12 tribes of Israel. Among the 12 tribes, Gath was targeted by the enemy, the adversary. And this tribe of Gath was no joke. They were serious people. And I want you to know that the target of evil is always good. Evil never targets anything but good. Evil goes after what is good. I was telling them in the first service that when my mother took seed of me, she bled for four months. She was lying in cold blood. Dr. Sacramento said, Florence, you can't carry this seed. You are weak. You are not eating. You are lying in cold blood. We have to save your life. So they went in and performed a procedure and moved the child out of my mother's womb. And months after the child was removed, her stomach kept growing. And they went in again. And they realized that apparently we were twins. And the first procedure took my twin out and left me in there. And at the time, they discovered that the bleeding had ceased. She wasn't bleeding anymore. Her strength had come back. And so they left me in there. That was not logical. That was not philosophy. And that was not medical science. That was supernatural. Come on, somebody. Scream. Say supernatural. Somebody put your hands together and scream supernatural. Somewhere in eternity before time began, God foresaw a conspiracy, an interference to abort me. And God said, put a twin in the mother's womb. Put a twin there. Put a twin. Because there will be a procedure. And when that moment comes, let one be taken out and leave this one in because I have a plan for this. Are you hearing me? Somebody said, but God could have prevented it. Yes. But he said, my ways are not your ways. Neither are your thoughts my thoughts. I was telling them the other day, I said, Herod, was moved to take the life of the baby Jesus. And God could have protected the child, Jesus, in Israel. But he sent an angel and said, I don't do my things that way. I'm God. I know how I handle my stuff. Take the child out of Israel. Hide him in Egypt for a season. So Jesus was kept in Egypt even though God could have protected him in Israel. Then came a time in the process of time the angel appeared to Joseph and said take the child, return to Israel for those that sought the life of the child are all dead. I declare the destruction of those who seek our life and the life of our children. Let them in the name of the Lord Jesus, let them die. To Layaku Wasan, the Faluka to Wasa, the Kanda Kasan, the Lay to Kuakasa, say to Kundu Basada. Come with me to First Chronicles, chapter 12 and verse 8. I want to show you something. I want to travel with you from the old to the new. And I want to establish an argument so that those of you who are struggling with certain situations you can't make sense of it you don't know what's going on I want to establish a truth to you I want you to know you are chosen I want you to know you are on divine assignment I want you to know that you are a curse breaker you are a game changer you were born for such a time like this to break a curse in your family Break a curse in your father's house. Break a curse in your mother's house. If you believe it, put your hands there and shout, I am a curse breaker. I am a curse breaker. Go ahead. 
And of the Gadites, they separated themselves unto David. And of what? The Gadites. You see that word again? That is Gath. This was the tribe that Jacob prophesied over and said, Gath shall be captured. Gath shall be hijacked. But at last, Gath will prevail. He will overcome at last. I declare I will have the last laugh. Oh, you didn't hear me. Tell somebody, make no mistake. Make no mistake. I will have the last laugh. If you believe it, put your hands together and declare it. I will have the last laugh. I will. Go ahead and scheme. Go ahead. Keep scheming. But I will have the last laugh. Shout yes. So look at the trace, look at, look at, look at the family or the tribe of God, what they were made of, and understand what the enemy goes after. The enemy does not go after just anybody. This enemy is no joke. And Christians are so ignorant of what we are dealing with. Go ahead. And of the Gadites. They separated themselves unto David into the hold to the wilderness, men of might. They were men of might. What the enemy targets is people of might, people of capacity, people of potential, people going somewhere in this life, curse breakers, game changers, destiny changers. God, go ahead. Men of might and men of war. They were men of war. Fit for the battle. They were fit for the battle. They were up to the tax. They had divine capabilities. Skillful in war. These were not ordinary people. Go ahead. That could handle shield and buckler. They can handle different types and kinds of ammunition and weapons. They were like the seals of the United States. Serious people. Go ahead. Whose faces were like the faces of lions? Their faces was as of a lion. Fearful people. And were dangerous as, people. Go ahead. And were as swift as the rose upon the mountain. They were swift. No joke. Swift. Sharp. These were serious people. The enemy don't play fair. As long as you live. I want to preach this message in a way that as long as you live, you never forget this message. Because the enemy we are dealing with don't play fair. Tell somebody, he does not play fair. He does not play fair. I know what I'm telling you because I've experienced it. I told them in the first service that I wasn't born this way. I had five fingers. I lost three of my fingers. And if I tell you the history from my mother's womb till now, the things I've suffered. So before you throw a stone and before you talk jazz, hold your peace and be careful. Because you don't know what's going on. Are you hearing me? Yeah. My mother told me before she passed. She said, Son, I don't understand you. I don't understand you. And she said, whenever you were sick among all my children, it was always life and death. Ordinarily, malaria was an issue whenever I was sick. And my mother didn't know who I was. Neither did I know who I was. I was a mess. My mother could not understand me. My father didn't know who I was. God hid my destiny from them all. The Bible said, if the princes of this world have known, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. So my father didn't know who his son was and my mother didn't know who I was. Until on the bed of affliction, when I lost three of my fingers, it was at that point when I encountered the Lord, then I knew that apparently, I was a chosen vessel against all odds and contradiction 
that God has chosen me. And I said, God, how can you choose me? Are you sure of what you are doing? Do you know who you are calling? I'm a failure. I'm a disappointment. And God said, have you not heard? Have you not been told that I am an expert of taking a nobody and making a somebody out of him? Have you not heard? Have you not been told that I am an expert of taking a nothing and nothing and nothing and making something out of nothing? That is the God you and I serve. If you believe it, put your hands together. Shout yes. Tell somebody, I have something. I have something. I have something. Tell somebody, I am on a, on a divine assignment. Tell someone, I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Modali Kadula Sa. Sit down for two minutes. Kadula Ki Asa. Isatu Luku Safala. Zelua. Ikalan. Mekandu San. Ikalaha Wasadili Kimuli Samala. Mola Italu Kalasi. Amen. Now, I've established a point. Now come with me to Mark the fourth chapter. Mark the fourth chapter. The 37 to the 39 verse. I want to show you something. Connected to God. And there arose a great storm of wind. And the waves bit into the ship. Uh -huh. So that it was so now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship. Asleep on the pillow. And they awake him and say unto him. Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. So here was Jesus. God made flesh. On one side of the Sea of Galilee, performing great wonders and miracles. Then in the midst of that great move of God, the word of the Lord came unto him and said, Jesus, I need you to leave this side of Jordan, cross over to the other side of Jordan. I have an assignment for you on the other side. So the Bible said they picked him from where he was and put him in the boat. And they were on their journey. In the middle of the journey, there rose a storm and a contrary wind. Hear me? Whenever you see a storm and you see a wind coming at you, family winds, storms at the home front, storms and wind at the church front, on the financial scene, on the political, or religious, or media scene, it's an indication that the enemy wants to interfere and abort somebody's mission. So Jesus rose. Taluka wahasa. Milata kantu kafatu wasala. Ikandu lufuku maham. Iku walasata hamand. And rebuke the wind. And said to the sea, you are not the cause of the problem the wind is. And I've dealt with the cause, the source. We call it Causes and effects. The problem with a lot of believers is we are always dealing with the causes and we, we are dealing with the effects and we never attack the cause. It doesn't matter how much you massage the effects. If you don't lay the axe to the cause and the roots, you never have a permanent solution. So Jesus rebuked the wind that was causing the storm. And he said to the sea, peace, be still. And there was a great calm. And they crossed over to the other side because there was a mission. There was a mission. And as an assignment waiting for him on the other side, tell somebody, there is a victory for you on the other side. Say the other side. The other side. Put your hands together and scream the other side. The other side. 
the other side not where you are but the other side hey modaku yasa and i want you to look at mark the fifth chapter reading from the first and second verse you would then understand what happened in chapter 4 the reason for the storm and the wind in chapter 4 was because somebody saw what was about to happen in chapter 5 and attempted to abort Jesus' mission to undermine and sabotage the deliverance of so many in chapter 5 that were waiting for the coming of Jesus to set them free and to rescue them an enemy Somebody say an enemy, an enemy. Come on, talk to me. Say an enemy, an enemy. The other day, the Bible said when men slept. When men slept, let me tell you something. The enemy works when men slumber. When men sleep, that is when the enemy works. And the Bible said, a man went and sowed with good seed. And when men slept, the enemy sneak in and sow tears. The servant said, Master, didn't you sow a good seed? Didn't you do a good thing? Didn't you raise up your kids well? Didn't you do them right? What is all of this that we are seeing? And I said the other day, you see this enemy, eh? he knows how to attach what you hate to what you love and to see how you deal with it. And when you have never dealt with a situation of seeing what you hate attached to what you love, shut your mouth and be careful. And the servant said, Master, Master, did you not sow a good seed? What is this that we are seeing about your seed? And he said, an enemy, an enemy has done this. An adversary has done this. Leave it alone. Make no mistake. Harvest time is coming. God will separate the wheat. Are you hearing me? From the tears. Say, I hear you. So, Jesus had the mission to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. But just before he got there, there was an interference. Hear me. There are so many of you seated here under the sound of my voice. You should have gone far by now, but something has interfered. There is an interference behind the scene, but this morning, we intercept every interference. We intercept every interference. Put your hands together at home, in your car, wherever you are. Say, I intercept. I intercept. And I override every interference in my life, in my health, in my body, in my finances. I intercept it. You can sit down and do nothing. It's your business. My job is to give instructions. You follow it, fine. You don't follow it, it's your business. Come on, somebody. Intercept every interference now sit down for two minutes sit down for two minutes now look at chapter 5 verse 1 and 2 and then I'll take you through scriptures then you can appreciate the reason for the storm and the wind in chapter 4 the purpose of the wind and the storm in chapter 4 was to abort everything I'm about to show you in chapter 5. Chapter 5 was God's original plan and intent. God had a plan and said, Jesus, I need you on the other side to fulfill a purpose. So Jesus was on the move to fulfill that purpose. And the enemy raised up an objection and said, Jesus, where do you think you are going? 
Where do you think you are going? <laughs> Where do you think you're going? Thank God that God you and I say he's a master. He wears the victor's crown. See, I hear you. So look at chapter 5, 1 and 2. As we go along, you understand chapter 4. Because if you don't understand chapter 4, chapter 5, you will misunderstand chapter 4. Look at chapter 5, 1 and 2. Go ahead. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. The country of what? The Gadarenes. Gath. Everybody say Gath. Gath. You see, Gadarenes, they expanded it. But it's the country of Gath. And that was Gath. Genesis 49, 19. When Joshua divided the promised land, Gath was given a geographical location where his descendants lived. And that particular location was where the descendant of the tribe of God, they lived there from generation to generation. And look at what became of one of the descendants of the tribe of God. He was taken captive. His destiny was hijacked by a troop, by a legion. Look at it carefully. And when he was come out of the ship, uh -huh. immediately they met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. A man with an unclean spirit. Right. Who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him. No, not with chains. He was uncontrollable. He couldn't stay among men, separated from home and from family and loved ones because something wouldn't allow him to be normal, to stay home, to have a sound mind, to be among his brethren. Something was determined to separate him from his own family. Today in the name of Jesus, anything that has been programmed to separate you from your loved ones and family, we intercept and terminate as you put your hands together right now. In the name of Jesus, intercept and terminate it. Stop for one minute. Go ahead, go ahead. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plugged asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus? Thou son of the most high God, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. You see, For to everything in life, there is an end. Mm. Hear me tell you something. There is nothing that is permanent. Ah. There's nothing. Yes, sir. Everything has an end. I declare an end to every injustice. I declare an end to every wickedness. An end to every dispute, an end to every contention, an end to any conflict over your body, your finances, your destiny, your life, and that of your children, your sons, your daughters, your grandchildren. Let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end as you put your hands together in the name of Jesus. Stop for a minute. Go ahead. For he said unto him, uh -huh. Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Uh -huh. And he asked him, What is thy name? Uh -huh. And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. You see that word Legion? The word Legion is the same word Jacob used in Genesis 49, 19. That word Legion in Hebrew means a troop. A troop. Legion shall hijack the destiny of one of the sons of the tribe of God. Today, by the blood of the covenant, give me Zacharias 9, 11. Hear me, we have a blood 
we have a covenant that is established by blood. And by the blood of our covenant, I command the destinies of sons, the destinies of daughters that have been hijacked to be released, discharged by the blood of the covenant. Put your hands together. Say, I command the release of destinies, of destinies, of sons and daughters of this house captured, hijacked in the pit, wherever they are, by the blood of the covenant. Let them be released. Release. Say, I command the release of destinies, destinies, destinies hijacked, businesses hijacked, bodies hijacked, health hijacked, ministries hijacked. Command the release. Open your mouth. Put your hands together. Somebody scream, release, release, release destinies. Let destinies be released. Destiny hijacked. Destiny hijackers, lift up your right hand. Lift up your right hand. Say in the name of Jesus. Listen, if you don't respond, eh, I will sit down and let Bishop Bobo die and any other bishop preach. Are you hearing me? I really don't have to preach. I'm just trying to help somebody. So if you are going to sit down there and think I don't have anything to do and I have to preach to you by force, I don't have to. I'm just trying to help you. Because I'm sick and tired of seeing the enemy messing up our children and our loved ones. And I'm just trying to help you. And if you don't want help, I will sit down and let somebody else come and preach. Are you hearing me, somebody? Say, I hear you. Say, I hear you. Lift up your hands. Say, in the name of Jesus. I intercept destiny hijackers. Right now, say, I command by the blood of the covenant. Destiny hijackers release the destiny of men and women, sons and daughters, wives and husbands that you have taken. Release them right now as I put my command. Command. Command the release of destinies that have been hijacked in the name of Jesus by witchcraft, sorceress, diviners. In the name of Jesus, by drugs, come on somebody, lift it up. Thank you. Sit down for two minutes. Sit down for two minutes. Please understand and realize that this life eh, is not governed by philosophy, logic, or by intellectual capability. This life is governed by the supernatural. Tell somebody the supernatural. Tell somebody what you don't see is what controls the natural. Don't be fooled. Make no mistake. Those of you Christians who live by your senses and by what you see and what you hear, this world, you know why America is falling apart and China is becoming a superpower? And Europe is falling apart. Because once upon a time, America was a very spiritual nation. They followed the God of the founding fathers. Who bowed their knee at the shores of America and prayed. That the gospel will invade the world from the shores of this country. Today, their children and descendants have become logical. Moved away from the gods of their fathers. Using natural senses and capabilities and logic to govern a country. If you look at China, China is many years ahead. And they are very spiritual people. Every year, they come up with different names. Watch it. Sometimes they say, this is the year of the dragon. The year of the frog. The year of the tiger. You think it's some kind of joke? No. You know what they are saying. They are invoking the dragon. They are invoking the spirit of the tiger. 
and you are sitting down using intellectual capabilities. They built a bridge recently in China. No country has ever attempted it. It's amazing to see the development in China. And it's not by skill. They are working with something supernatural. And America is talking about how great a country they are, they rule the world. You are joking. Your glory, your glory has ended. The glory of Europe has departed. One of the bishops was telling me that they are selling 40,000 church buildings in France. 40,000 church buildings in France is being sold because a generation have risen who don't know God. Because their fathers and mothers fail to give them the knowledge of God. They gave them honey, houses, and buildings without spirituality. So they have forsaken the gods of their fathers. And let me submit to every father and mother hearing the sound of my voice. Give your children houses. Give them an inheritance. But the best inheritance you can give to your children is the knowledge of God and spirituality. Come on, put your hands together and give God praise. Somebody say, I have something. Come on, talk to me. Say, I have something. Say, I'm going somewhere. Say, I am on a mission. Come with me to chapter 5, verse 15 of Mark. Then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon-possessed uh -huh. and, had, and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And you they see, were afraid. If you look at the way this generation dress, something is wrong, I'm telling you. Some of the way they dress, it's an indication that they are not in their right mind. Because if you are in your right mind, you won't leave your pants around your butt down there. Showing all your butts. The Bible said, and they came and saw him dress. And that word dress means well behave. This generation don't know how to behave well. We don't have regard and respect for the elderly. One of the signs of this generation is disobedient to parents. Rebelling against parents. Dishonoring parents. is one of the signs of the end time. And they found him in his right mind. Dressed properly. How I pray that our children and this generation will dress properly. That they will behave well and behave right. One of the reasons why a lot of young people are dying prematurely is because they lack understanding of honor. Yes. Honor your father. Honor your mother. That it may be well with you that thou mayest live long. And it's not just an honor for your father and mother, but honor for the elderly. Yes, sir. Honor for the elderly. There are people in this church, I don't call them by their first name. I call them uncles. They are mothers. I call them mother, auntie. And because I'm an archbishop, doesn't give me the authorization to disrespect people. And I pray that our sons and our daughters and this generation will be in their right mind because there is a contention, a dispute, a conflict, and a fight over the mind of this generation. And right now, we break the attack. We break the mental bombardment. We break the confusion. We break the contention. We break the dispute over the minds of our children. Put your hands together. Break the confusion. Intercept the attack on the minds of our sons and the minds of our daughters. Break the attack. Put your hands up, break it. We break it. We break the attack 
on the minds of our sons, our daughters, our grandchildren, and this generation. Let the attack on their minds be broken in the name of Jesus. Thank you. On in his right mind, how I pray that our sons and daughters and this generation will be in their right mind. And then look at verse 20. Look at verse 20. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis uh -huh. how great things Jesus had done for him uh -huh. and all men did marvel. You see, what God is about to do with you and your children, men and women will marvel. They will stand in awe when God is finished with you. When you have gone through whatever storms you are going through and you've come to the other side, men will stand in awe. They will marvel and they will say, is that you? What happened? And you will tell them, this is the doing of the Lord. Come on, put your hands together if you believe it. You see, two things here. The word publish the word publish means to proclaim, to make known, or to preach. Then the word decapolis means ten cities or ten regions. According to Bible historians, as I studied, this guy who was captured, whose destiny was hijacked, when he was released, by Jesus, he became a first class evangelist of those days and published or preached to 10 cities and established New Testament churches in all the 10 regions, which is known as Decapolis. Hear me. The storm and the wind in Mark, the fourth chapter was to abort the mission of this guy. Was to stop the mega churches that were raised in Decapolis by the man whose destiny was hijacked. We intercept every abortive spirit. Come on, somebody. Somebody, somebody, somebody. Say in the name of Jesus, I intercept abortive spirit. Put your hands together and say, I intercept, I intercept any assignment of the enemy to abort my destiny, to abort the destiny of my sons, my daughters, my grandchildren, my loved ones. I intercept every abortive spirit in the name of Jesus. Say yes. Lift up your right hand. Say, I declare by the blood of the covenant that my destiny will not be aborted. Say the destiny of my sons and daughters shall not be aborted. Say the destiny of my loved ones will not be aborted. In the name of Jesus, say I avert, I intercept, I avert every abortive spirit. Put your hands together. Attack it now. Don't be nice. The enemy don't play fair. Open your mouth, somebody. Open fire on any abortive spirit and declare the destinies of my children and grandchildren, loved ones, home and abroad, will not be aborted. Sit down for two minutes. Sit down for two minutes. You know, when I live in America, one day I went to preach in a mega church. And I was trying to put my sermons together. And it wasn't working. So I said to the Lord, Lord, I don't know what to preach. And he said, you don't have to preach anything. Just go stand there. And I said, but I have to prepare. He said, no, not this time. I'm in command. So when I got there, he said, when you take the microphone, I want you to make my people angry. Make them angry. And I said, why? He said, my people are too much comfortable. A lot of them are sitting pretty. And the Bible said, woe to them that sit at ease in Zion. 
Woe unto them that are at ease. They are comfortable. Sitting pretty in Zion. He said, go and make them angry. And he said, until they become angry. And until they are sick and tired of what the enemy is doing, they will never have the upper hand. So I came in and I was very angry. And I made everybody angry. And I told them, pray or die. That was my message. Today, I'm not just saying pray. Pray, fast, or die. And that's why I have declared to further notice. Every week, we will eat. Every week, we will eat five days and we will fast two days. So every Wednesday and every Friday is our day of fasting. And then of that day of the week, you can eat. And every Monday morning, from 5.30 to 6.30, meet me on the Dominion Arena. I'm declaring commanding your week. Command your week. You can command your week. Tomorrow morning, I'm dealing with deliverance from evil. And if you don't know, there's evil in this world. Jesus said, deliver us from evil. And in John 17, he said, Father, I pray not that you take them out of this world, but I pray that you deliver them from the evil that is in this world. 9-11 was an evil day. October 7th was an evil day. Give you some few insight tomorrow. Meet me there. If you want to pray fast and not die. And you can look at me and say, something is wrong. I'm not, nothing is wrong with me. I've seen believers who must live and they die because they love food too much. They love food. They love their flesh. They love looking good and being in the good books of people. They love image. And if you are that kind, you never be spiritual. You never have an upper hand. Because sometimes, the Bible said, if the princes of this world, this world have known, they wouldn't have crucified a lot of glory. Sometimes God will use shame and what looks like shame and embarrassment to give you the victory. Jesus was hung on the cross, naked, naked on the cross. And that would look shameful and embarrassing. It was out of that came the victory. An eternal victory was won for humanity over the enemy. So keep looking pretty and keep on looking good. The demons will fool with you. Because even people who are spiritual, we are still battling. And you that are carnal, you don't stand a chance. Amen? Go ahead. Let's move. And, and uh -huh. when Jesus was passed over again by ship mm -hmm. onto the other side, mm -hmm. much people gathered unto him. Yeah. And it was nigh unto the sea. Yes, sir. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, uh -huh. Jairus by name. Uh -huh. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. Mm -hmm. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, yeah. that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and yeah. thronged him. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years, uh -huh. and had suffered many things of many physicians, uh -huh. and had spent all that she had, uh -huh. and was nothing bettered, uh -huh. but rather grew worse, when she had heard that of Jesus, came in, and came in the press behind, and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, uh -huh. and she felt in her body mm -hmm. that she was healed of that plague. Go ahead. 
And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith had made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why trouble thou the master any further? Stop there. Stop there. The reason for chapter 4, the storm and the wind was because of all these events that were in the pipeline to take place. Number one, the deliverance of Gath from the tribe of Gath. For Jacob had prophesied that at last Gath shall overcome and declare and declare the overcoming powers of the blood of the Lamb on the behalf of all those whom the enemy has captured let them overcome Jesus had to release God the first thing the second point is this the ruler of the synagogue's daughter had to be rescued from premature death, Chaios. And the woman suffering from an issue of blood for 12 years, who sold all that she had and spent it on physicians and never grew better, but worse, her deliverance was also on the line. And Jesus was coming to free these three people and the elements were deployed to abort the mission to sabotage their healing, their deliverance, and the resurrection of Jairus' daughter. Watch this. Jesus was on his way after setting God free to heal Jairus' daughter. And there was an interference. Somebody say an interference. Okay, somebody say an interference. Uh, and somebody said delays, delays, delays You see, an interference creates delays And when delays are created If you haven't developed extra capacity You can miss it I'm telling you That's why I'm pushing you to pray Because you see, having a prayer life Gives you extra capacity To make up for the delays There were ten virgins all of them were virgins. They all had oil waiting for the bridegroom. And the bridegroom delayed. And he came at the 12th hour. When the bridegroom came, 12, 10 of them, 5, had developed extra capacity. The other 5, didn't have extra capacity. So when the bridegroom came, they were all virgins. Five virgins entered. The other virgins were denied. They missed it. They missed it because of the delay. And the delay was a manipulation. If you don't develop extra capacity, an interference of the enemy can cause a delay. And when the delay comes, if you haven't developed extra capacity, City, you can miss it. Tell somebody, tell two people, get up, get up. Tell two people, develop extra capacity. Tell, get up, tell two people, develop extra capacity. For the road is long, the journey is long. It is. Sit down, sit down. The journey is long. The journey is long. And it's not. It's not for lazy people. 
It's not. It's not for lazy people. It's for people who are relentless. People who understand that, hear me, there's no other alternative. There's no alternative. I told them in the first service, when it comes to the conflicts of life and to the disputes over our lives, you can win this battle on the bed of affliction because the stress of the frustration and the delays can end you on the hospital bed. Or you can find yourself in the court of law. Fighting for your right in the court of law. Or you can settle it in prayer. Molaki totos. So da luka da. Makatu wan. Ke falaka satu kasia. I said you can settle it in prayer. Or the hospital. Or the legal court. Are you hearing me somebody? Lift up your right hand. Say by the blood of the covenant. I settle every contention. I settle every dispute in prayer. Concerning my health, my life, my loved ones, my family, my marriage, my finances, my business, my investment. Put your hands together. Settle it in prayer by the blood of the covenant. Come on somebody. Ain't nobody praying for you. Pray for yourself. Open your mouth. Settle it by prayer. Settle it. In prayer. In prayer. By the blood of the covenant. Settle it. In Jesus name. Sit down for one minute. Sit down for one minute. So hear me. Jesus was on his way to Jairus house. To save the daughter from dying prematurely. Then came a woman that was suffering from an issue of blood for 12 years. Jairus' daughter was 12 years. The woman has been bleeding for 12 years. So she be, her bleeding, her hemorrhaging began from the very first year Jairus' daughter was born. And this is the lesson here. This generation is so spiritually weak and bankrupt that they don't have what it takes to survive what their fathers and their mothers survive. And that's why we must help our sons, our daughters, and our grandchildren to become spiritual. Because, hear me, the things we have survived, Malaka Tukasata. Realize that the woman survived issue of blood for 12 years, but the 12 years old child could not survive whatever sickness attacked her. And she died prematurely and could not survive. This generation, fathers, mothers, if we don't teach them spirituality, they might not be able to survive what we survive. I'm telling you, if you know what I have survived and what I survived on daily basis, you have no idea what it takes me to stand here to preach. You have no idea what it takes for me to even study the Bible and to even fast and pray to preach. You have no idea. You don't know the price. You don't know what it costs me. You don't know what I go through. You don't know the voices I deal with. You don't know the things I contend with to come stand here. Because if you know when I'm preaching, you won't even sit there and look at me with that, your wonderful look. I'm telling you. The woman, the old generation, had something the young generation didn't have. She knew something the young girl, Jairus' daughter, didn't know. She knew how to fight. She knew how to live. She knew how to survive. She knew how to lose everything she had and still be alive. 
She knew how to lose money, houses, investment, everything. She knew how to deal with shame, embarrassment, reproach, disgrace, mockery. She knew how to survive all those things. But this generation, they don't know how to deal with shame. They don't know how to deal with embarrassment. They don't know how to deal with mockery. They don't know how to lose their reputation. This woman had nothing. She stings. She was smelling. And by the law in those days, she was not allowed to visit her children. She wasn't allowed to be with her husband. She wasn't allowed to cook. She wasn't allowed to come to the temple. She wasn't allowed to be in the public. Even for her to touch Jesus, she has to risk her life because that, on his own, she would have been stoned to death. Yes. For her to come into the public and crawl under the feet of men, to touch Jesus, according to the Levitical law, she was unclean. She has to be stoned to death. But she knew that this was the only chance she had. That everything was gone. And she concluded, if I perish, let me perish. I'm already perished. I'm already dead. I have nothing to live for. So if I die, let me die. But before I die, let me take this one chance and risk for survival. She lost everything, but she was a survivor. She was not a casualty. She wasn't a victim, but a victor. But the young girl, 12 years old, had no capacity to survive that sickness and illness that came up in her. Whether it was fever, malaria, jaundice, nobody knew. But she didn't have what it takes to survive it. But this woman, she was spiritual. She had faith. She was a spiritual woman. She understood the supernatural. She had spiritual capacity and audacity and said, this sickness can kill me. I refuse to die. I will not die. My spirit will not be separated from my body. I will survive this. Tell somebody I'm a survivor. Come on, put your hands together and say I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I will survive this too. Shout yes, shout yes, shout yes, shout yes. Hear me. The reason for what happened in chapter 4, the storm and the wind was because Jesus had an assignment to fulfill in chapter 5. One, setting free God. The descendant of Jacob. Fulfilling Genesis 49, 19. Then the next thing was to heal the woman suffering from an issue of blood. And the third thing was to resurrect the next generation, the 12 years old, Jairus' daughter. And all that was on the line if what happened in chapter 4 had succeeded. The prophecy of Jacob over God wouldn't have happened. Jairus' daughter would have died. The woman suffering an issue of blood would have died. I pray that your assignment will not be aborted. Hey! Hey! I said I pray that your divine assignment will not be aborted. Stamp your feet. Open your mouth. Clap your hands. Declare, my assignment will not be aborted. Come on, somebody. Say something. Declare it. Proclaim it. Open your mouth. Say it. Declare it. Push it. Are you praying? Are you praying? Come on. Open fire. 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 Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Somebody say fire. Fire.
Now, we want to pray. But before we get into this prayer, there is this song. Fire, fire, fire. Fire, fall on me. Fire, fire, fire. Fire, fall on me. As the day of Pentecost, fire, fall on me. As the day of Pentecost, fire, fall on me. Fire, 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 fall on me. Fire, fall on me. Fire, 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 fall on me. yourself why me why what's going on for many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivered them out of them all many are the afflictions the Bible says which much tribulation or trouble shall we enter into the kingdom of heaven you hear what I said yeah yeah. If you are going through much tribulation, it's an indication that you are entering the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Yeah. He said, with much trouble, we shall enter. There's no trouble free Christianity. You lazy bunch of believers. There's no trouble free Christianity. Say, I hear you. Come with me to Jude 1 9. Are you ready to pray? I'm not feeling you. I'm going to sit down. I said, Are you ready to pray? Give me Jude 1 9. Yet Michael the archangel uh -huh. went contending with the devil. He disputed about the body of Moses. Say, contend, dispute. Say, contend, dispute. Content, dispute. Say, contentions, contentions and disputes, disputes over the body of Moses. Do you know some of you, eh? There is a dispute and a contention over your body, over your health, because the enemy knows that your body carries the destiny and the dream and the vision. So if he can perfect your body and afflict your body and incapacitate you physically you can't carry the vision you are carrying but today let your body be set free let your body be released say release 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 say i lose my body say i release my body from every dispute and contention see i release my body from every spirit of infirmity from every affliction from every contention from conflicts from dispute, put your hands together. Lose your body. Lose your body. Lose the body of your family, your wife, your husband, your children, your sons, your daughters, your loved ones. Let their bodies be loose. Lose their minds. Lose the minds of my children. Lose their bodies. Lose their soul. Lose their destiny. I rebuke you by the rebuke of the Lord. Lose their life. Lose their destiny. Lose their mission. Come on. Now, stop there. Somebody say disputes. Say contentions. Say conflicts. Say in the name of Jesus. By the blood of the covenant. I intercept conflicts, contentions, disputes over my life, my destiny, my finances, my sons, my daughters, my investments my land in the name of jesus say every contention conflicts disputes be intercepted now and arrested put your hands together intercept and arrest open your mouth 
say something. In the name of Jesus. Now. Now. Let me show you something else. Go to Isaiah chapter 1, chapter 10, verse 1. Look at Isaiah chapter 10, verse 1. I want to show you. Hear me. Say, every physical outcome was initiated in the spirit. Let me tell you. When you see things happen physically, it didn't just happen. It was initiated in the spirit. Matu, Makam, Ekalasa Kata, Wakasaluta Lahasa, Imalatu Kam. I curse you by the heavens and by the earth. Whoever you are, working in the shadows to devise my head and demise and the head of my seed, be a curse by the elements of the heaven and the elements of the earth. In the name of Jesus, say yes. Look at it. Look at Isaiah 10 1. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decree. Somebody say unrighteous decree. Say we abolish every unrighteous decree. In the book of Esther, there was an unrighteous decree against the Jews by Haman the Agagite to wipe out all the Jews by the blood of the covenant. Between now, the 11th month, to the end of the year, and beyond, beyond 31st December, any unrighteous decrees, they have decreed to disadvantage you and your children and your seed. Let those unrighteous decree be intercepted, abolished, abolished. Put your hands together, abolish it. Say, I abolish. Unrighteous decree. Open your mouth. Say something. Be aggressive. The enemy don't play fair. Stop being nice. Stop being together. He doesn't play fair. In the name of Jesus. Now, go to the next verse. Look at it. Same chapter. Same verse one. Go ahead, Bishop. Uh, please. Turn it to New King James. Yeah, go back. Woe to those who go decree. Go back to verse one. Verse one. Who decree unrighteous decrees? Uh -huh. Who write misfortune? Who write what? Misfortune. You know, before I got born again, eh, we used to go places, and sometimes we go and consult warlocks, diviners, and sorcerers, and they will write misfortunes in a piece of paper with the names of people and give it to you to go and bury it. Or go to the cemetery and bury it. A misfortune against people. They are writings of ordinances. I was telling them in the first service how my father taught me spirituality. One day I was in the house with him at the airport and he said, Nicholas, you said you were a pastor? I said, Yes. And he laughed and shook his head. And I said, what is this old man trying to tell me? He said, follow me. So I followed him. And he took me to the other property. And on that land, there were many coconut trees. And there were coconut on every tree except one. So we got to that tree that didn't have any fruit on it. And he said, he spoke to the tree. And I almost said, my father is losing it. And he said, you, if I come next year at the same time and you haven't bought fruit, I will cut you down. Do you hear me? And he walked away. He didn't say anything. And I said to myself, what on earth is wrong with this old man? I almost told my siblings, I think the old man has lost it. Though. We have to get the doctors to come and check him. But after that, he was still himself. Everything was okay. So I said, okay. I don't know what he's trying to show me and teach me. I kept quiet. The next year, around the same time, the Lord remind, reminded me 
and say, go and check that tree. When I went, that coconut tree had fruit upon it. And I said, I said, wow. So you mean the people on the other side understand spirituality? Then years after, I discover a scripture in Mark the, 4, the 11th chapter. How the Bible said, and Jesus, and Jesus responded to the fig tree. Now, if he responded or answered the fig tree, it means logically that the fig tree said something. Then number two, the Bible said he cast the fig tree. And 24 hours when he came back, the fig tree had withered. And the fig tree, he said to the fig tree, no man eat of you henceforth. That was an instruction given to the fig tree. And the fig tree complied. It means that the fig tree have ears to hear and a mouth to speak. Now, don't go around talking to trees. Oh. Uh -huh. Because if you go talking to trees, we will lock you up at asylum. So don't go talking. I'm just giving you. I want you to see how the supernatural controls the natural. And I learned that from my father. And I said, wow, these people are very spiritual. I learned a lot from him, even though he wasn't born again. I learned a lot. I learned spirituality. Amen. Let me show you a scripture. Isaiah 14, 4. Isaiah 14, 4. Uh-huh. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, uh -huh. How have the oppressors seized the golden no give me, let's give let's me the other translation and I let me go to NIV please. NIV NIV You give will take NIV. up this taunt against the king of Babylon. That's it, NIV. How NIV. the oppressor has come to an end, uh -huh. how his fury has ended. You see, hear me. Hear me. The fury, the anger. Of the enemy. God said to Satan the other day. About Job. He said. Satan. Go you move me. To destroy Job without a cause. And that bothered me. How the enemy. <coughs> can move God. To destroy somebody without a reason. There are so many people. In prison. Who shouldn't have been there? There are people in this life eh, who have been disadvantaged because somebody powerful <coughs> was provoked, incited against them. If God can be moved against somebody, an innocent person, to destroy the person, how much more ordinary human beings? And he said, the oppression of the oppressor has come to an end. And his, and his fury has ended. Has ended. Today, by the blood of the covenant, I declare, let the oppression end. Let the oppression come to an end. Let his fury against us and our children come to an end. Put your hands together. Prophesy. Let the oppressor and his fury come to an end. Open your mouth. Declare it. In the name of Jesus. Now give me, give me Isaiah. Isaiah 41, 11 to 13. The easy translation. Listen to this. Uh, listen to this. Everyone who has been angry with you will now become completely ashamed. You, you, you didn't hear that. You didn't hear it. Do you know that there are people angry with us? And our children, without a cause, without a reason. But let them be ashamed. Let them be put to shame. 
let them be turned back let them be disadvantaged and turn back that are few angry with us go ahead those who have attacked you will disappear and die oh you didn't hear that anyone attacking us and our children let them disappear and die put your hands together declare it right now open your declare it let them disappear let them be disadvantaged let them die according to the word of the lord as it is written according to the scriptures those who attack us and our family and our children let them disappear and die come on somebody open your mouth declare it now finish it even if you look for your enemies you will not find them he said he said you will consider diligently you will look for those who have made themselves adversaries and enemies and yeah they will disappear they will not be found there will be nowhere to be found go ahead they will all disappear they will all what disappear we command their disappearance every one of them attacking us fighting us angry with us home and abroad put your hands together we command their disappearance that seek and devise our head in the name of jesus come on somebody push it open your mouth declare it amen let's finish he said yes i am the lord your god i will hold on to your right hand i will say to you do not be afraid i will help you now let me i'll continue tomorrow morning at 5 30 as i declare deliverance from evil and as we command our week but i want us to end with this scripture first samuel 13 no 30 18 to 19 First Samuel 30, 18 to 19. And David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. I declare you will recover all. Amen. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. By the blood of my covenant, of covenant, I recover all my losses. Say I recover my stolen goods. I recover wasted years. I recover every lost grounds. Say, let my seed, let my children, let my loved ones recover their stolen goods, their wasted years, their lost ground. We recover all. Put your hands because they recover all. Come on, somebody. I can't hear you. That is not how you recover. Come on. Recover all. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, finish. Finish. And David recovered all that the Amalekites have carried away, and David rescued his two wives. Say, I rescue. Say, I rescue every loved one. Say, I command by the blood of the covenant the rescue of my children, my loved ones, in the name of Jesus, home and abroad. Say, I rescue anyone that concerns me, hijack and captured by the enemy as i put my hands together i rescue them go on a rescue mission right now rescue them let them be rescued rescued from the grip of the terrible from the hand of the enemy from the shackles and the chains of injustice and wickedness let them be rescued in the name of jesus amen and there was nothing lacking of them neither small nor great uh -huh. neither sons nor daughters neither spoil nor anything that had been taken of them uh -huh. david recovered all hear me go to two people and say to them in the name of jesus recover all come on tell two people recover all recover all Recover all. Recover all. That's my, I recover all. I recover all. Say by the blood of the covenant. 
I'll recover all. Do you believe it? If you believe it, shout. If you believe it, scream. If you believe it, say something. 